Good morning. Good morning. Today we are going to continue learning about quadratic equations. Specifically, we're going to learn about finding characteristics of quadratic functions from their equations. Start with a quick recap. Um, here we see a quadratic function on a graph and we also see the standard form equation. Um, that's that ax squared plus bx plus c. And if you'll recall from last week, all quadratic functions have something called a vertex. That's this point right here. And they have an axis of symmetry. So that line that you can fold the shape over and it would match up perfectly. So you'll see that um, in red on the graph. So for this quadratic, which is just uh, x squared, the vertex is the origin right there. That's 0, 0. And the equation of the axis of symmetry, that would be x equals 0. OK, so that's pretty easy to see when we have a graph. I can see the vertex. I can see where that line of symmetry would be. But what if we don't have a graph? What if the only thing we have is the equation? Well, that is what we are going to be talking about today. So today's video will show you how to use the standard form equation of a quadratic function to find the vertex and the axis of symmetry. One idea I want to start out with, which is that the x coordinate of the vertex will always be in the equation for the axis of symmetry. So let's see what that might look like. Here's a quadratic that I found on Google. And if we find the axis of symmetry, so find that line that we can fold over and match up, that would be the line x equals negative 3. And the vertex for this quadratic, that minimum point at the bottom there, that's negative 3, negative 2. So if you take a look at each of those, you'll see that the x coordinate of the vertex, that negative 3, that is the value for that uh, axis of symmetry. So x equals negative 3. OK, so how do we find those from just the equation? Well, there's a formula. So to find the x coordinate of the vertex, which is the same thing as the axis of symmetry, we use the following formula. You'll see it here. x equals negative b over 2a. So that's uh, often called the vertex formula. That formula is going to give you the x coordinate of the vertex, which is the same thing as the axis of symmetry. Here's an example. So here you'll see the quadratic equation x squared plus 14x. And if I want to find the axis of symmetry, I need to start by finding the b coefficient and the a coefficient. Um, and that's what we talked about last week. And to make it a little clearer, I'm going to replace this original equation with a slight change. Um, I'm going to put a 1 in front of that x squared because when we don't see a coefficient there, it's like there's an invisible one there. And so from there, it's pretty straightforward. I can see that my a coefficient is just 1 and my b coefficient is 14. So a is always the coefficient attached to the x squared term. b is always the coefficient attached to the x term. So from there, I can set up this formula. I just plug those in to the vertex formula. I'm going to have negative 14, so negative b, over 2a, so over 2 times 1. I'll simplify that, so negative 14 over 2, and from there we can get that x equals negative 7. So that means that the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals negative 7, and that negative 7 is going to be the x coordinate of the vertex. Cool. So how do we find the y-coordinate? Well, just take that x value and plug it back into the equation. 
Remember, that's how coordinate points work, right? So for any equation, if you plug in the x value, the y value is the result. That's any point on a line is formed by plugging in the x to get the y. So here's another quadratic. Um, this one is 2x squared minus 8x plus 2. So we're going to start by figuring out what our a and b values are. Um, a is pretty simple, the number attached to the x squared, that's going to be 2. b in this case, um, we need to be a little careful. The b value is negative 8, negative 8. And so if I'm going to be plugging in that b value to our vertex formula, I need to remember that I'm going to have a negative, negative b. Okay, so the opposite of any negative number is just a positive number. So when I plug in that negative 8 to the vertex formula, that's going to be a positive 8. So positive 8 over 2a, so that's over 2 times 2, and we can simplify that to 8 over 4, which ends up being 2. Okay, we have an x value of 2, that's going to be the equation for our axis of symmetry, and that's also going to be the x coordinate of our vertex. Now to find the y coordinate, we're going to plug that x value back into the original equation. So you'll see I've replaced that x from the original equation with the 2 in parentheses. I've substituted it in and we're just going to follow order of operations. I see an exponent there, so I'm going to take care of that first. 2 squared is going to be 4. Um, I'm all done with exponents, so I can move on to multiplication. I see two things that need to be multiplied. That 2 times 4 is going to be 8. That 8 times 2 is going to be 16. And from there, we're all done with multiplication, and we can move on to doing addition and subtraction, which we do from left to right. So 8 minus 16 plus 2, that's going to end up being negative 6. So what that means is that that negative 6 is the y coordinate of our vertex. So our vertex is going to be 2, negative 6. And I'll show you on Desmos to prove it. So pull up Desmos. Remember our original uh, equation was 2x squared minus 8x plus 2. And we said that our axis of symmetry was going to be x equals 2. And our vertex is going to be 2 comma negative 6. So if I graph that quadratic, you'll see it here. You can see that the line x equals 2, it's going to show up in red. That's going to cut that quadratic in half perfectly. It's going to be the axis of symmetry. And that point 2, negative 6 is indeed our vertex. And that is it for today. So use this new formula. It'll give you the x coordinate of the vertex and also the axis of symmetry and then just plug that number back into the equation to find the y coordinate of the vertex.